I ought to go over some receiver 101 facts. What is receivership? A receivership is a solution for secured lenders, such as a chartered bank. The bank loans the company money and the company pledges the business assets as security for the loan. If the business defaults on its lending arrangement, generally by non-payment, the secured lender can enforce its security against the assets in receivership. So receivership is a remedy for secured creditors. There are two kinds of receiverships in Canada, 1, a private appointment or, 2, a court appointment. A receiver gets its authority and powers from either the security documents in a private appointment or the court order in a court appointment. The BIA specifies that only a licensed insolvency trustee, previously called a bankruptcy trustee, LIT, can serve as a receiver. A receiver in a private appointment acts on behalf of the appointing secured lender. A court-appointed receiver has the responsibility to all creditors. What is a company receivership? Normally, the procedure starts with the secured financial institution talking to a lit. When it is decided that there ought to be a receiver designated, the secured lender needs to decide if it will be a private appointment, or if the assistance of the court is required. Each situation will dictate what is the best method for receivership. They can either appoint the receiver under an appointment letter or apply to the court for an order selecting the receiver, court appointed, receivers and receiverships. In a private receivership, the receiver needs to get the approval of the secured lender prior to implementing its recommended action steps. In a court appointment, the receiver needs the authorization of the court for its activities and actions. The receiver's very first responsibility is to take possession and control of the assets, properties and undertaking of the company and receivership. In a private appointment, the receiver takes possession of the assets covered by the secured lender's security. In a court appointment, the receiver takes possession of whatever assets it has authority over from the court order. The receiver has to make a decision whether it can obtain a better value for the business assets if it runs the business. Conversely, the receiver might determine that the danger of running the business negates any potential upside in value. In that case, the receiver would not operate the business and merely liquidate the assets. The receiver after that establishes a strategy for the sale of the assets. The receiver also has to make sure that the assets are physically secured and insured. Challenging a Receivership Appointment Court Order On September 19, 2019, the Court of Appeal of Manitoba released its decision in 7,451,190 Manitoba Limited VCWV Maxim Financial Incorporated et al., 2019 MBCA 95. On December 20, 2018, the court made an order appointing a receiver, receivership order, over the assets of 7,451,190 Manitoba Limited Company. The order was made upon the application to court by the secured lender. On January 14, 2019, the company appealed the receivership order. The secured lender opposed the appeal on two main grounds, being The company did not have an appeal as of right, rather, it requires to seek leave to appeal first, which should be declined, and the appeal was statute barred as it was not submitted within 10 days of the appointment order appealed from. The issues the appeal court needed to consider were colon, Whether the nature of the company's appeal of the appointment order requires an application for leave or if it is a right under section 193 of the BIA. If the leave to appeal is necessary, should such leave be provided? Whether the company should be given more time to submit its notice of appeal. Appealing a business receivership court order. So the first issue the court had to consider was whether or not the company had an appeal of the receivership order as a right, or if it needed to first apply to the court with leave to appeal motion. The court determined that the company's appeal of the receivership appointment order is not of right. Rather, leave to appeal needed to be made. The things that the court considered in making its determination included that. The security documents entered into by the company clearly outlined the lender's remedy to appoint a receiver when there was an event of default. The company was represented and made submissions against the appointment of a receiver at the initial hearing where the appointment order was made. The appointment order contained the necessary comeback clause. No party made an application under this clause to amend the powers of the receiver under the appointment order. Since appointed, the receiver has actually filed two reports with the court. The reports notified all stakeholders and the court of the decisions taken and choices made. The receiver also sought approval of different activities. The company has actually not filed any type of motion challenging the actions taken by the receiver. Should leave to appeal the appointment of the receiver manager be granted? Section 193 of the BIA allows that an appeal lies to the Court of Appeal from any kind of order of a judge of the court in certain situations. 
the court confirmed that the criteria to think about in making a decision whether to give leave to appeal under Section 193EE of the BAR. The suggested appeal raises an issue of general importance to the practice of bankruptcy-slash-insolvency matters or to the administration of justice as a whole. The issue raised is of relevance to the action itself. The proposed appeal is prima facie meritorious. Whether the suggested appeal will unduly hinder the progression of the bankruptcy-slash-insolvency case. The court went on to say that, regardless of these criteria, the court retains a residual discretion to grant leave to appeal where the refusal to do so would result in oppression. When the court considered these requirements, taking into consideration the whole context, the court was not persuaded to grant the company leave to appeal the receivership order. The court determined that in this case, the company's appeal should be denied. This Court of Appeal of Manitoba is consistent with the Court of Appeal for Ontario case that I mentioned at the top of this Brandon's blog and previously wrote about. It also provided additional detail and reasons as to why appealing a receivership order is not a right, but leave to appeal needs to be granted. Summary Is your company in need of financial restructuring? The financial restructuring process is complex. The Ira Smith team understands how to do a complex corporate restructuring. However, more importantly, we understand the needs of the entrepreneur. You are worried because your company is facing significant financial challenges. Your business provides income not only for your family. Many other families rely on you and your company for their well-being. The stress placed upon you due to your company's financial challenges is enormous. We understand your pain points. We look at your entire situation and devise a strategy that is as unique as you and your company's problems financial and emotional. The way we dealt with this problem and devised a corporate restructuring plan, we know that we can help you and your company too. We know that companies facing financial problems need a realistic lifeline. There is no one solution fits all approach with the Ira Smith team. That is why we can develop a company restructuring process as unique as the financial problems and pain it is facing. If any of this sounds familiar to you and you are serious in finding a solution, contact the Ira Smith trustee and receiver incorporated team today. Call us now for a free consultation. We will get your company back on the road to healthy stress-free operations and recover from the pain points in your life, starting over, starting now.